Hello, hello. Welcome to today's live English lesson here on the Speak English with Vanessa YouTube channel. I'm so glad that you're here to join me to speak English, to participate, and today to meet a special guest. Usually for live lessons, it's just me, but today we have a friend, another English teacher, Jennifer. So today you get two teachers instead of just one, and she teaches at English outside the box. So I'm going to let her explain. Jennifer, what is outside the box? What does this mean, English outside the box? Ooh, hey, 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 everybody. Um, I'm so happy to be here on this show and connecting with all of you and teaching you English. So English outside the box was born, was started um, because I am obviously not inside of the traditional classroom and I am kind of teaching online and I feel like I'm teaching a little outside of those traditional ways. I mean, obviously you teaching on YouTube are doing the same thing, but it's the idea of getting people outside of the traditional books and classrooms and that traditional way of learning because technology is here, everybody, and there are so many other ways to learn that I think are better. Yes, yeah, and I think that's a big part of why people are learning English online because it's more convenient, it's flexible, you can have 10 teachers, you can just follow what you want to learn. So that's really cool. I'm glad to meet someone else who has the same mindset. <laughs> yes. And not and only, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead and not only. I was going to say, not only do we have the same mindset for teaching English, but we have a lot in common. And I shared this in my invitation email to my students to join this live lesson, but we both have a cat with the same name. We are both, I'm about to have a baby boy. You already have a baby boy and you've lived abroad for a while. We have a lot in common. And we just discovered one new thing this morning. It's crazy. Yes, our oh, wow. husbands both play the drums. <laughs> yes, so those like small world coincidences or those very small things are, are crazy. So yeah. Yes, I think it's so cool to meet someone who lives, you know, you live on the other side of the U.S. in California, right? Not yet. I'm in Arizona, but as of July, we'll be in California. Woo! Wonderful. So you're really in a completely different time zone. It's what, 6 a.m. for you? And 6 a.m. <laughs> but this is normal baby waking time. So it's, <laughs> I'm used to it. I need to get used to it too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So today we're going to talk about pronunciation because. There are a lot of specific pronunciation issues that a lot of English learners have difficulties with. And even though you are an expert at difficulties that Portuguese or Brazilians have with English, today we're going to talk about a pronunciation issue that a lot of people deal with, not just Brazilians and Portuguese speakers. So what pronunciation are we going to talk about today, Jennifer? <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about the beautiful ED ending. And it's really important because there are so many words that need it. Of course, obviously, there's the past tense verbs. We have the third verb or the past participle that also end in ED. And adjectives. Adjectives also end in ED, some adjectives and an ED. So it's it's an ending that's really important and it's an ending that's confused or mispronounced because a lot of students don't know there are three. There are three ED ending sounds and I think a lot of students read ED and think ed, right? It should just be all pronounced the same because it looks the same, right? Oh, it maybe not. <laughs> ED, ed, but as we know, English, English, you're a little trickier than that. <laughs> yeah, so I want to know to those people who are here live, do you feel like you can accurately pronounce the ED ending? All these ED endings that Jennifer just mentioned, there's three of them for adjectives, for verbs. Do you feel like you can do it? Oh, some people said they've got some issues with ED. So today's lesson is for you. Very cool. <laughs> Yes. So I am curious um, if anybody knows the rules. 
I mean, before we get into it, should should maybe we maybe we can see if they know. Maybe we can give some examples. Great idea. So, if any of you know anything about how to pronounce ED, this is your time to show your knowledge. And if you don't know, that's why you're here to learn more. <laughs> so, Perfect. what what do you think is the best place to start for learning about ED endings? Do you think it's best to start with verbs, with adjectives, with certain kinds of sounds? Where's the best place to start, in your opinion? I think the best place to start would be to hear the different endings and identify what some of those different endings are and definitely hearing it in context. Oh, great idea. And guess what? We've got a couple of people who are here live who've got it. Navjat says, id, t, and d. <gasps> All right. Avan says the same thing. All right. We've got a good start. So let's take this outside the grammar book knowledge and just use it in context, like you said, use it in sentences and words to make it more realistic. <laughs> Perfect. So what is something you wanted to do when you were younger? Oh. Did, you know, did you know that you wanted to be an English teacher? Absolutely not. I had no idea that I wanted to be an English teacher. In fact, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a professional water skier. <laughs> what? I um, have never water skied before. Oh, well, I'm curious for everyone watching too. Let us know what's something that you wanted to do when you were a kid. And for me, I wanted to water ski because it's a pretty difficult thing to do. And when I went to the lake with my friends, I think I was eight years old, maybe nine years old, and everyone tried to water ski, even the adults, and no one could do it. And then I did it successfully, and everyone was so happy and so proud of me, and I felt like I had some special gift. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> nice. And so what changed? Oh, well, I think what changed was I found other interests. <laughs> And I don't live near a lake, so I could only do that, you know, once a year, maybe, maybe once every two years. So yeah. I think it was that life changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if I said I wanted to be a professional water skier when I was younger? No, Is that <laughs> amazing? <laughs> that, that would be cool, but that's not true. Wow, was, so yeah, what about for you? What, what did you want to be? I wanted to be a psychologist oh you wanted to be a psychologist really and I wanted why? to be a psychologist I have so the way I fell into teaching is yeah, kind of similar because I, I knew I wanted to be in a profession that I wanted to help people and I wanted to connect with people and you know help them reach or achieve something so it started off as being a psychologist then I found this love and passion for um, communication and speaking, and I did courses to be a speech pathologist. Oh. And then that kind of led me to English as a second language. And then, of course, as you know, we both moved and lived abroad. So, yeah, that yeah. led me to teaching English. And so, bum, 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 here we are. All, the, all of those steps led me here. Wow, so a lot has changed, but your interest in helping people hasn't changed. <laughs> exactly. A lot has changed, but I'm still helping others with their goals. Yeah, and a lot of people here, too, have mentioned things that they wanted to be. Do you mind if I read a couple of comments from our lovely live friends? Um, we have, I wanted to be a doctor. Rose wanted to be a doctor. Interesting. Maha says, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> oh, Alexander wanted to be a vampire. I love kids' dreams. They're so endless. <laughs> so maybe for us, the things we wanted to be changed over time. Have you guys noticed any ED sounds in our sentences we wanted to do a lot but yes they changed over time mm, yes so we we've got two words we also asked everyone watching what they do so we asked what you wanted to do and maybe if it changed 
Oh, this is beautiful. We've got all three <laughs> ED sounds in one idea. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I do have to say a uh, uh, hello to Adriana B. I have to just give her a little shout out. I saw her in the chat. Welcome. Hey, welcome. <laughs> so those are the three D ending sounds. D, id, and t. And I, I'm curious if you've ever had experience or if um, the chat wants to participate. Are they equally difficult? Are they equally easy? Is there any tricks to pronounce them? You know, kind of giving them a little help and okay, now we've introduced it. What's next? Using yeah, it. That's how a good idea. Are there any tricks to remember how to use it? Because I feel like a lot of my students, if they don't know how to pronounce an ed ending word, they'll use id, like we used for wanted, decided, because there is a e and then a d. So you want to pronounce both letters. But if there's a T, like we used, we had changed or asked, that E kind of gets cut out and you just add a D or add a T. So I think the, the D and T seem to be maybe a little more complex or not as intuitive. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know specifically the K T is really hard. Oh, let's practice so, it. Let's do, yeah, let's do some practice. So I'm just gonna ask you a question maybe to introduce it. Um, um, who, who'd you talk to on the phone yesterday or did you talk on the phone yesterday? Oh, did I actually talk? Oh, I did talk on the phone. I talked on the phone with the mechanic. I have to go to the mechanic today for my poor car. <laughs> So you talked on the phone, that's good. And so, I asked him about my car. <laughs> nice, so talked, asked. Um, did you walk yesterday? Oh, I did, actually I walked a lot. I walked around the neighborhood twice and then I went to kind of this nature hillside with my husband and I walked while he played frisbee golf. <laughs> Ooh. Walked and played. Interesting. Walked and played. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of K T sounds. So I'm curious for those of you who are live here, use these three words that we talked about. Asked, talked, walked. Did you walk yesterday? Who did you talk with yesterday? Did you ask them anything? And try to use these yourself and repeat after us. Yeah. Can we do a, a quick, you know, word and sentence and have them repeat? Yes, let's do it. Okay. So I'll say the word, you say the word, I'll say the sentence, you say the sentence. And then everyone watching can maybe repeat after each time so they'll get a lot of practice. Great. Sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> so talked. Talked. I talked on the phone. I talked on the phone. I hope you guys are also repeating this. Yes, <laughs> because we know. <laughs> we know how to say this. So I'm listening this all around the you. world. <laughs> oh, good. I heard you guys. I heard you guys. Nice. OK. <laughs> so walked. Walked. I walked around the block. I walked around the block. Vanessa, your pronunciation is perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope that everyone else who is watching this can repeat after us. Don't be embarrassed. Just say it out loud or even whisper it, but listen to your own voice. Yeah, yeah. So walked, talked, asked, that's the k -t or the ending T sound. Something else that I've, I've found is kind of difficult is a PT. Oh, yeah, let's practice that. So a PT, so the sound. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, so make sure you're not in front of someone you, you know, really like and say because it might get dangerous. <laughs> so we're talking about words like jumped, tripped. 
Yes. Those are the two words off the top of my head. The first words I think of. Mm, I think these are um, perfect words to describe my my cats because one cat is really uh, just really clever. And he yesterday he jumped from the top of the door down to the ground. And then the other cat, it's not so clever. And he tripped, she tripped oh. jumping off the table. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, poor kitty. One, one jumped, one tripped. Ah. Um, yes. Someone in the chat wrote another good one, slept. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. So did you sleep much last night? How long yeah. did you sleep last night? Uh, I slept a total... I I'm not going to scare you. I slept eight <laughs> hours. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's so realistic. And how old is your son? Six months old? Seven months old. Yeah. Mm, no need to lie. We all know that as a new parent, you don't sleep much. <laughs> I slept about five hours last night. Not okay. straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure those people watching here who are parents yeah. completely understand, and I will understand yeah. soon enough. <laughs> yes. Um, tell me, have you ever had that really embarrassing situation? Have you ever tripped in public? Oh, of course. <laughs> Thankfully, it. I've never tripped at an important event or really crucial moment in my life, but I think everyone has tripped at some point and you kind of look around like, did anyone see me? Was anyone watching? And then you try to walk on and pretend like it never happened. <laughs> yes. So just in case there's any confusion, trip is when you're walking and and you fall. <laughs> Sometimes flat on your face. Yes. Have you ever tripped before in public or in an important event? Absolutely. Like you said, I think everyone has tripped sometime in their life. Um, I've definitely tripped probably so much that I can't even think about one time only that I tripped. I don't know. There's probably a lot. Tripped. Yeah, I think those kind of things just happen often enough that you try to yeah. block them out and forget them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where are, are, should we maybe do a couple of words and sentences with trip now? Yes. And jump? Yes, let's practice them. <clears throat> jumped. Jumped. Nice. I jumped so high. I jumped so high. <laughs> Um, tripped. Tripped. I tripped yesterday in the street. I tripped yesterday in the street. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. Okay. So, t tripped, t talked. What are some other endings? Sh what other endings should we review today? Well, I do believe there is another D ending for ED that we could talk about. In fact, there's a lot of great comments about mm, using D, such as Rose says, I prayed, jammed on the guitar. Ooh, we've got some nice ones. Jammed, prayed. You said played. Your husband played frisbee golf. Yes, he did. It's a little difficult now for me to play frisbee golf. So I walked and he played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, good. Played. So is there a trick? How do students know? Do Is it d? Is it t? Like, is there a trick? You, well, usually whenever I talk about ED or try to help students with ED, I feel like there are more rules for the first two that we already talked about, like wanted and then the t, t ending, id and t, and then almost all the other letters are just d. A lot of people wrote here great, great words like damaged or uh, we've got some others here. 
Oh, they passed by really quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Begged. <laughs> Begged. Um, there is a question that keeps coming up um, that goes into that third ending that we kind of briefly talked about, but not really, which is the id. Mm -hmm. So words that end in a T or a D, verbs or, you know, base words that end in a T or a D have that id ending. So you, I, you basically just mentioned this, but kind of reiterating the fact that the majority of words actually don't have the id, even though most students see ed, ed, right? You know, kind of like what we talked about this morning or earlier. So the only words that actually end in id, id are words that end in t and d. And someone in the chat, I missed the name, but they asked about the word attempted. Ooh, Attempt. that's a great one. Attempt, attempted, id, attempted. So we've got E-I-D, the id, attempt, id, for just a couple ending sounds. So it's not as common as, as you would expect, especially considering there's E-D, there's two sounds here, but we're not really pronouncing two sounds for most words. So we practiced wanted, decided, and then a little bit with T, liked, talked, walked. What about some of these other words with D? Hmm. And ended. Oh, ended is a nice one too. Yes. <laughs> um, were we talking when you said the words that end in D, words that end in D with the id or the E D ending that is d words that end in E D, but it sounds just like d. For example, what happened yesterday? Or I changed my mind. <laughs> Considered. Oh, yes. Oh, we've got a good one here. Tafik says learned. Learned. So I know that you learned how to speak Portuguese in Brazil, right? So can you tell me how did you learn Portuguese? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I learned Portuguese because I needed to survive and I wanted to have a little bit more understanding at the lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner table at my husband's house. So when I moved to Brazil, I'm from the States, I'm American, and I actually met my husband while living in Australia. And we met, and then we decided, I'm emphasizing these E's, EDs, we decided to move to Brazil. So we moved to Brazil, and I did not, maybe I knew, Hi, how are you in Portuguese? Maybe. And that's that's me like giving myself a lot of credit. I went there knowing nothing. And wow, that's I, amazing that you learned so much. Yeah. So it was I was there for a total of eight months and I left being able to have a conversation. Congratulations. And was, that's really impressive. <laughs> So I'm curious because you lived abroad and obviously everyone here is learning English, learning this new language. How many times were you in a situation that you needed French, right? Yes. That you needed French. All of the students watching, how many times have you needed English and you're in this situation and the language happens and you don't understand, so you do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. It's exactly what happens. <laughs> so you kind of smile and like, yeah, yeah. And then you realize, oh my gosh, someone just asked me a question. And then, uh, so I was tired of courtesy laughing at the table and I needed to learn Portuguese. So I learned by um, doing some language exchange. I took a course and just speaking in Portuguese, listening to music, watching TV, you know, probably some of the same tricks you used when you were learning French. Yeah, and I bet a lot of the same things that people watching here have are using now that maybe you learned English, you know, when you were in elementary school and it wasn't so successful. So now you're learning again as an adult outside the box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So here we used a lot of ED sounds in this quick little story about your language learning experience. And I also recommend for students who are watching, if you're watching the replay or if you're watching live, just to go back when we finish, go back and listen to that again and try to repeat what Jennifer said. Repeat those sentences and emphasize those sounds because you can memorize the rules and that's okay if you wanna do that. But also if you repeat it again and again and you hear learned, wanted in that same pronunciation a lot, you're not going to mispronounce it because you've always heard it in the right way. So I recommend repeating after her and maybe we can do some repetition too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is the uh, one of the best ways to learn repetition, pronunciation, shadowing, using the right materials. So definitely, definitely utilize the conversation. Yes, yes. So let's see, are there any d sounds maybe learned that we can practice together quickly a little back and forth and then those watching can also practice at the same time yes so we talked about it we both named our cat the same thing so your your cat's nickname is my cat's name so we have the word the verb name named Named, named, that's a good one. Named, I named my cat Lulu. I named my cat Lulu too. <laughs> so we named our cats the same. Yes, we named our cats the same name. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, named. So then another one, called. Oh, called, called. Unfortunately, you called the mechanic. Yes, unfortunately, I called the mechanic, but fortunately, he helped me. Yeah, he helped you. Excellent. Yes, only after I give him a lot of money, of course. <laughs> car, I mean, cars, you need the car, right? Yeah, it's the US, it's necessary, but you know, it happens. <laughs> named, good. So named, called, good so i think maybe we should do a quick repetition as a quick review of all of the words we talked about today sounds great yes let's review all of these and see if everyone here can use those pronunciation muscles <laughs> ah, me 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 okay so everyone wherever you are make sure you're saying these out loud people might think you're crazy but you can turn to them and say hey i'm learning english please yes don't worry about what they think <laughs> don't worry about what i'm doing okay so we have, we'll start with the ending E, D, ed. Remember, these are the words that end in a T or a D. So we have want, wanted. Want, wanted. I wanted to speak English. <gasps> I wanted to speak English. <laughs> Next we have need, needed. Need, needed. I needed to speak English. <laughs> yes, I needed to speak English. Okay, then we have the t. So there's a lot of different sounds that t. we focused on two really difficult ones today, t and k. T. So I talked to my mom after I tripped in the street. I talked to I, my mom after I tripped in the street. I talked to my mom after I tripped in the street. Oh, I was oh. so embarrassed. Oh, I was embarrassed. Oh, okay. And then we have great named and called. Um, I named my cat Lulu and I called her Lulu as well. I named my cat Lulu and I called her Lulu too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, so many, so many good words here. So many good words. Yes, yes. I hope those of you watching too have had some pronunciation practice. If you're somewhere public or somewhere uncomfortable, just go back, be somewhere quiet and try to repeat these things because Jennifer is really helpful with pronunciation. It's so good to hear two voices and... You're also an expert at helping specifically Portuguese speakers improve their pronunciation because you learned Portuguese, you know all of the difficulties that your husband has with English or that your Brazilian friends have with English. So you are also 
this kind of special niche, this special group of people helping them to learn better pronunciation in general. Yes. So I kind of as well backwards, backwards learned some of these issues because, you know, when I was speaking, I would say things incorrectly in Portuguese because of how I would say them in English. You know, in things, it works backwards as well. It works that way with like grammar and pronunciation and sentence structure as well. But yeah, you know, speaking in Portuguese, eu falo português. And so, you know, having that um, understanding, I am able to understand a lot more intensely why Portuguese speakers make these mistakes, which I think really helps students because as teachers and as native speakers, you know that we can identify something that sounds wrong. And, you know, native speakers, not teachers, can sometimes identify why something, or can identify that something sounds wrong, but they're like, oh, that sounds wrong. I don't know why, but I know it's wrong. Yeah, you know? so you have a special perspective because you learned Portuguese and you're you also see through the eyes of a native English speaker. So that's really important to know both sides of it. Yeah, so it's really, it's really helpful. It's like I, I'm able to help them understand through their language. Mm, yes, yes. So I think that this is a, a really useful skill that you have and it's something that I don't have because I don't speak Portuguese yet. Maybe someday I'll learn but it's something that you specialize in. And because of that, you created a special pronunciation course specifically for Portuguese speakers to help them improve their pronunciation, including ED sounds or other challenging sounds that you've noticed are really difficult for Brazilians to overcome and speak English with a beautiful natural accent. So can you tell us a little bit about your your pronunciation course that's specifically for Portuguese speakers. And we have some fun bonuses that I'm introducing as well, if you would like to learn with Jennifer. So can you introduce a little bit about your, your cool pronunciation course? Ooh, yes. So, pronuncia de inglês para nativos de língua portuguesa. Don't look so scared, Vanessa. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning with you right now. <laughs> yes. So, um, obviously, it's it's a course for Portuguese speakers. So, the Portuguese name of the course is, again, Pronuncia de Inglês para Nativos de Língua Portuguesa. And it's, it's a pronunciation course specifically designed for English or for Portuguese speakers. So the English name is English pronunciation for Portuguese speakers. And so Hurrah, I can understand that one. Hey, so I have created this course based on the most common mistakes that Portuguese speakers make. So of course it's never good to generalize and say that every Portuguese speaker always makes these mistakes. Of course there are exceptions. Of course there are some things that are different. But even as English speakers, when we speak another language, we make a lot of the same mistakes because of our mother tongue, because of our native language. Yeah, I think the same goes for general pronunciation courses. It's some, some good general pronunciation courses can be helpful, but if you really want to work on becoming advanced, going from intermediate to advanced, you have to work on specific sounds that are difficult for your native language, really specific things, instead of just general pronunciation tips. Those can be helpful, but really specific ones will help you to reach the next level even faster. Yeah, so something to kind of connect with someone who is a Portuguese speaker, maybe watching right now, or, you know, thinking, finding, um, if you don't speak Portuguese, finding something else that, that happens in your language. So when we look at the word B E M in Portuguese, Vanessa, how would you pronounce that? 
B E M. Bem. <laughs> bem. So if we look at your position of your mouth, right, you go bem. Because in English, M, we close our mouth. Mm. However, my dear friend, in Portuguese, it's tudo bem. bem. Really? Bem. So it sounds like an N instead so of M? Yes, yeah, so it sounds like an N. So an issue that Portuguese speakers have is when they read words in English that ends with an E-M, especially like them, they often pronounce it then. So I'll call them. And it's like, wait, I'll call them or them? Then, that, huh? So that can cause a lot of confusion. <laughs> So much confusion. So a lot of the times when Portuguese speakers or anyone makes those common mistakes in pronunciation, it can, it can cause miscommunication because sometimes other words exist. You know, them and then, they both exist. So if you don't say it correctly, then it causes some issues. So the Portuguese course I created focuses on these common mistakes. The ending M, the ED, the three sound, the TH sound, not free, not three, not tree, but three, right? It's so difficult. And that TH sound, huh, hard, right, Vanessa? Yeah, I think that's something that is really useful to focus on. And I feel like you as a teacher, you're not stressing the specific rules of it. You're outside the box. You're trying to think of practical ways to improve this style of pronunciation with fun repetition and you know people really can improve pronunciation but it takes passion and motivation and good materials so I think that that's something that's really useful in your awesome Portuguese specific course to help people improve <laughs> yeah and so yes yeah, so of the course it goes over the six most common mistakes, the six most common mistakes, and it goes over why they're mistakes, why they're mistakes in Portuguese connected to English. It goes over repetition, how to fix it, pictures, sentence examples, audio. It's an entirely video-based lesson, so you're going to be seeing me and watching me, looking at my mouth position, because anyone and everyone watching mouth position, your tongue, your lips, all of these muscles are the most important thing for pronunciation. Yes, yes. I think especially watching your mouth and trying to imitate that. And you know the specific mistakes and the specific mouth position mistakes. So that seems really, really useful. And we also have some fun bonuses because I... A lot of people ask me, can you sell this course? Can you sell this course? Can you give this to your students? Can you give that to your students? And a lot of times, I say no, because I don't think it's the best quality or the best material, or maybe I don't feel like the teacher is outside the box enough. <laughs> so with your course, I feel like we are on the same page. We have so much in common, and this style of learning is really useful. So for the next four days, today's Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, stopping on Monday, so I guess four and a half days, we have some extra bonuses. So if you would like to join Jennifer's English pronunciation for Portuguese speakers, we've got some bonuses. Do you want to talk about your bonus? And I'll talk about mine. And then after Monday, there will be no more bonuses. So we can quickly introduce them. Yeah. So, um... This bonus, so this course is, again, video course, and it goes over the six most common mistakes to help you speak better. So a part of speaking better, a part of that fluency is pronunciation, and it's also the ability to start a conversation, to have a conversation, and to be able to pronounce things correctly. So if you sign up today, Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday, in addition to the course, you're going to get a little fluency guide from me. And the fluency guide goes over another common pronunciation principle, the schwa sound. Hmm. So 
Mm. The schwa is that uh, it's that unaccented vowel. So um, we go over what the schwa is, why you need it. It is the most commonly pronounced English sound. So it's very important. It happens all the time. And also you get a conversation starter guide. So I am helping you as an English learner with three different situations that you can start a conversation, questions you can ask, answers you can give, and all of it has the audio to review the pronunciation. So for example, when, it, when we have the question like, what did you do, what'd you do? What'd you do? And it's like, ah. so we go over common questions and their pronunciation as well. That's really important because if you have been studying English for a while and then you have a trip to New York and then someone asks you a question, Whew, the pronunciation is going to be so different than what you heard in very clear, maybe more inside the box style pronunciation courses. So this is going to help you learn really what people say. <laughs> yes. 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 yes, and, yes. And I have a special bonus that I'm adding to this as well. So first, before I tell you about the bonus, there's a couple questions from people in the chat box asking, is this only for Portuguese speakers? Is the course for, can an Italian join the course? Can a Russian join the course? How, what would you say about that? So the course is designed for Portuguese speakers because I connect it a lot to the Portuguese language. However, the sounds we review are the TH sound. So Portuguese speakers are not the only speaker that has an issue with TH and I connect it to the F sound, the T sound, and sometimes the S sound, which mm -hmm. is a problem for, um, like I know, a lot of different languages. Um, we also talk about I and E. So am I going to the beach or am I going to the beach? You know, so that E and I sound. We also talk about the ending M and um, so, is it, it it was designed for portuguese speakers however if you have issues with the common mistakes that i talk about then it would be helpful as well for others sure and, and i our, recommend oh go ahead and the bonuses that we're giving are also for everybody yeah and i i recommend too if you if you're a portuguese speaker yes definitely this course is for you and if you're not You've got a lot of great YouTube videos and just check out Jennifer's YouTube channel because there's a lot of just useful, energetic material for learning English as well. So there's definitely things that you can use to improve your English. Yeah. As so, far as my bonus, mm -hmm. this is I'm offering. It's actually something that I made for one of my courses as a bonus for that course, but I haven't offered it as a bonus for about a year. So this is kind of exclusive five MP3 and PDF. You can follow the transcript pronunciation lessons with my husband, Dan. So we take five difficult words such as close, comfortable, I'm going to the store. I'm gonna buy something. These difficult sounds, and we talk about them together. So you get to hear a male voice, a female voice, and these five different MP3s you'll be able to download with the course as a bonus. Because if you join the course normally, you're not gonna get Jennifer's fluency guide. You're not gonna get my five pronunciation MP3s with my husband. So I think this is a good chance to get the most for your time and your money and your value to be able to really improve. And this has been really useful together. <laughs> that sounds amazing and go Dan. What a great, yeah. Thing. What a great thing that he does to join and help you out. I know, I feel really lucky that he's willing to help and he's a great teacher too. So it's awesome to have two voices. <laughs> yeah. So, how can people get these bonuses, Vanessa? How can people join the course? How can they get um, the bonuses? Well, the easiest way is there's a link in the description. <laughs> and this link will be available for the next five days. So if you're watching this in the future, we're talking about May 11th, 2017 until 
May 15th, 2017. So if you're watching this in June or July, feel free to check out Jennifer's YouTube channel or her website, but the link for getting the bonuses will be closed. So from May 11th to May 15th, click on the link in the description and you'll be able to learn about really mastering pronunciation, especially for Portuguese speakers. You've got it. So if they want to join, they can click the link in the description. You click the link, you join the course, and you will have immediate access to the full course. You'll have immediate access to the welcome videos, telling you how to use it, and giving you all six videos. And then you will have access to those bonuses the day that you buy them as well. So that means if you buy, if someone buys today, they can immediately start speaking better English. Hurrah, success. That's always so nice because online you just get it instantly and it feels so much better than, oh, I have to wait until next month when my class starts. You just start now. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, I love it. And um, do you mind if I plug in English outside the box? So you mentioned they can go onto, you know, my YouTube channel and all you need to do is just search for English outside the box and you'll see me wearing a beautifully bright colored yellow shirt in the picture and you know you found the right one. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so check out Jennifer's YouTube channel, English Outside the Box, and it'll be great to learn. I think that's the good thing about learning online. You can learn with me. You can learn with Jennifer. You can learn with 10 other teachers and it's no problem. <laughs> it's like all access all the time. Oh, the internet's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jennifer, for teaching about ED. I think that everyone here has been able to interact and learn a lot, and I hope use those pronunciation muscles and maybe take it to the next level and be able to really master it with your course. Woohoo! Thank you for having me on today and practicing the ED with me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone who joined us live. If you're watching the replay, thanks for your time and your energy and your passion. Hopefully, we can do something again together in the future. If you guys would like for Jennifer and I to do something together again, let us know. And I'll talk to you later, Jennifer. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>